Yeah, I know that's my martini. So, we're gonna talk about rocket. We're gonna talk about these fucking tubes. Yeah, Happy's here too. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna drop you on TV here, right? Yeah, I know it's my martini. You're not having it. Yes. I know. Smells good. Tastes even better. Yes. Why? You wanna go down? All right. All right. All right. Big hugs. Big hugs to the camera. I got the good one. I got the good one. Yeah, you. I got the good dog. What are we going to talk about, Happy? Long time since you've been in one of my videos. Yeah. We're going to talk about these fucking tubes, yeah. These fucking kt 170s bane of my fucking existence for the last month, but we fixed the problem, didn't we? Yes, we did. All right, I put you down, yeah? Okay, go kill Rocket. Good girl. Yeah, sniff her ass. There you go. That's all you're fucking good for. All right, guys. So, yeah. It's KT-170 tubes here. Yeah, I know did did that video, what, a month or so ago. They were great and all that. Well, not as great as I thought. Well, rolled off trouble. Had a few issues. Um, as you guys know, in the Thomas video, he lent me his amps. I basically did some troubleshooting. Turns out that uh, without really showing the schematic, because I'm under NDA with Black Ice, there's an op amp that basically comes into the input signal that's tied right off of the XLR and RCA connectors. Well, I guess Jim Fosgate used the TL-52 op amp, which is, what, 30-plus years old, 35-year-old uh, design. There's nothing wrong with it back in the day. And obviously it works fine for their products as it stands right now. I mean, I put KT-88s or 6550s in these amps, and beautiful treble, mid-range, all that good stuff. Bass is, you know, what, what you expect for the lower power tubes. And... No, but I plugged these KT-170s in and the treble went for a shit. And... Oh, that's a good martini. So, last week, I grabbed the schematic, said, all right. And I've got some old OPA-627 op amps. So I had these OPA 627s from when I was building the uh, the active Bose EQs for my single-ended to, to balanced adapters that I got from China. Again, another Duke Audio Black Bear product. And they worked great, but when I wound up not using them, you know, I saved the op amps and there were little brown dog adapter boards, and I plugged one into this guy. Damn, the trouble came back. You know, and one thing with these tubes, I found they don't lie about the recordings. So if you got a recording that's very bright, very harsh, and I'm talking your 1980s pop stuff, you know, a lot, even a lot of my prog rock stuff was recorded very bright. Um, whether or not they were digitally recorded on Sony recorders at the time, I'm not sure, but anyhow, um, at the same time, a lot of your 70s stuff that's kind of got a more lush or warm kind of, you know, 70s, I guess, sound to it. They're a little more rolled off here where the mid-range is heavy, bass is super deep, the upper mid-range and the treble region can be a little soft on those types of recordings, but feed this thing any kind of high energy, you know, very high frequency type content and that's just amazing um, so yeah that's basically what I was fighting with for the last uh, month was getting these things to sound good and um, like I said it was the op amp that did it now going forward if I ever have to change them out again those OPA 627s used to be 28 bucks a pop at Mouser and I think they're discontinued now by TI Again, that used to be an analog devices um, part. That the replacement for that now is the two-channel version, is the two eight two eight, 
OP, yeah, OPA2828, and the single channel version is the OP828. And the brown dog boards that I had, basically you could put two of those 627As on there, which gave you the two channels and had the nice eight gold pins, and you were off to the races. So yeah, if anybody's running these things on a black ice amp, KT170s, you may want to talk to Jared over at the factory and ask him about this op amp mod if you're having trouble with the trouble. I'm, I'm sure on a pair of Focals it may not be as, you know, much, but my basic th bullshit theory is the OPA 627s, they're a super low noise, you know, noise floor uh, op amp. Uh, they're very fast. It's again, it's also at least a 20 plus old design. I mean, a lot of companies used to use those op amps in their uh, DAX, in their preamps, and things like that because of their characteristics. And it did the trick here, you know. I was worried. I was really pissed for a while. I was ready to sell these fucking tubes, put the KT 88s, and just run it with the subs, and away we go. But the op amp was the epiphany. All right, guys, that was another short one. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now, and have a good rest of your weekend. And uh, happy May 2-4 weekend to my fellow Canadians uh, north of the border there. Bye for now, guys.